Hi, so glad you joined me today. We're going to be studying Psalm 71 today. So let's start again by reading a scripture, which is what we do every time we start. And we are looking at Psalm 119 because it's a beautiful psalm um, about the Word of God. And so I love using verses from Psalm 119 to pray. And we're going to look at verse 16 today. I delight in your decrees. I will not neglect your word. So Lord, we come before you today as we begin our study of Psalm 71. And we ask you, Lord, to put a delight in us for your decrees, Lord. And God, may we be able to say, I will not neglect your word. I will live by what your word says. I will do as what your word says, Lord. And God, we just love your word. And we pray that you would teach us new things today. Amen. So we are going to look at Psalm 71, and there is actually a lot in this psalm today. So I'm really excited about going through this psalm. So I have all my pens and pencils and tape and all kinds of things ready for me to start marking up um, either my Bible or the page if you're using this page. So let's read it first, and then we'll start to work through um, all the information. So it says this, In you, Lord, I have taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness, rescue me and deliver me. Turn your ear to me and save me. Be my rock of refuge, to which I can always go. Give the command to save me, for you are my rock and my fortress. Deliver me, my God, from the hand of the wicked, from the grasp of those who are evil and cruel. For you have been my hope, sovereign Lord, my confidence since my youth. From birth, I have relied on you. You brought me forth from my mother's womb. I will ever praise you. I have become a sign to many. You are my strong refuge. My mouth is filled with your praise, declaring your splendor all day long. Do not cast me away when I am old. Do not forsake me when my strength is gone. For my enemies speak against me. Those who wait to kill me conspire together. They say God has forsaken him. Pursue him and seize him, for no one will rescue him. <clears throat> Do not be far from me, my God. Come quickly, God, to help me. May my accusers perish in shame. May those who want to harm me be covered with scorn and disgrace. As for me, I will always have hope. I will praise you more and more. My mouth will tell of your righteous deeds, of your saving acts all day long, though I know not how to relate them all. I will come and proclaim your mighty acts, sovereign Lord. I will proclaim your righteous deeds, yours alone. Since my youth, God, you have taught me, and to this day I declare your marvelous deeds. Even when I am old and gray, do not forsake me, my God, till I declare your power to the next generation, your mighty acts to all who are to come. Your righteousness, God, reaches to the heavens. You who have done great things, who is like you, God? Though you have made me see troubles many and bitter, you will restore my life again. From the depths of the earth, you will again bring me up. You will increase my honor and comfort me once more. I will praise you with the harp for your faithfulness, my God. I will sing praise to you with the lyre, Holy One of Israel. My lips will shout for joy when I sing praise to you. I, whom you have delivered, my tongue will tell of your righteous acts all day long. For those who wanted to harm me have been put to shame and confusion. So the first thing we like to do is always put a label on the psalm. What category is this psalm? And this psalm is considered a prayer for help. So I'm going to write that up on the top here. So a prayer for help. Um, and some actually categorize this as a lament. So I'm going to write both of those. And I do that often in my Bible. Sometimes you'll see one commentary says this category and another commentary will say a different category. And sometimes I'll write both of them in there just so that um, I have that perspective. Um, now, remember, 
when we studied Psalm 70, we said that there are some scholars that like to put Psalm 70 and 71 together. Um, we are uh, going to keep them separate, but Psalm 70 is uh, very different from Psalm 71. It's brief. It's very pointed. Uh, it shows this urgency to needing God to save them. Psalm 71 um, takes its time at arriving at the descriptions of distress. Um, it actually contains more lines of praise to God than it does petitions. Um, and the mood of this one is not a sense of urgency, but more of a reflective of a lifetime living in God's faithfulness. So kind of just going back and reflecting on my life and saying, here's what God has done for me. So let's put a little bit of structure on this one, because again, this is a longer psalm. And when they're longer, I like to put brackets and um, and categorize a little bit because it helps me. So I'm going to start with the beginning and the beginning is verses one through eight. And again, because I'm writing on the paper, it comes down there. I put an arrow and then I just come here and I'm going to go all the way through to eight. And this section is just more or less just an opening. It's opening petitions and then the opening petitions and then there are declarations. We're going to look a lot at the declarations um, about God because there are a lot in this psalm. And so we're going to do a lot of color coding and marking things as as the different things. So we're going to do petitions in one color, declarations in another color. So what I think I'll do is right now, even in this thing right here, I'm going to choose the colors. So I'm going to do my petitions in this pink and I'm going to do um, who God is, the declarations about God in yellow, just so that I know when I'm marking those down. So then the next section, uh, 9 through 11, is the description of his distress. So this is going to tell us a little bit about what he's going through. So description of distress. And then the next section would be 12 through 18. So on my paper, that's pretty much this whole section here. 12 through 18 is petitions. And then the rest of it on the end here, 19 through 24 is praise. And again, we'll label more as we go, but that helps me just kind of get it uh, structured out a little bit to help me as I'm studying it. So let's look at the first section, one through eight, and let's color code um, our petitions and our um, declarations about God, who God is, because I think this is good to look at it this way. So from the opening, we see that this psalm is very different from the surrounding psalms for help because instead of this imperative plea right away, um, which is normally how a prayer for help starts, is um, help me, save me. So if we go back and look at Psalm 70 for a second, look at hasten, O God, save me. That's typical of a prayer for help. This one does not start like that. It starts instead with an address to God. So he's just going to talk to God at the beginning. Um, in you, Lord, I have taken refuge. There's his just talking to God before he starts to list all of his petitions. So now what we're going to do is we're going to label the petitions. So we have, let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness, rescue me. Deliver me, save me, and then he says, turn your ear to me. So we see a lot of um, typical words that we have seen in many of the Psalms for help. Deliver me, save me. Those are all very typical uh, wordings that we see so often. And then we have in verse 3, be my rock of refuge. 
Um, and then here he says, to which I can always go, give the command to save me. We already saw that. You are my rock and my fortress. Deliver me. We already wrote down deliver me. So it looks like the rest of it um, doesn't have any more uh, petitions. So now let's go look at um, who he's saying God is or, or just his declarations about God. So it's more like um, God has done this or things that he's saying he has done. Like for instance here, I have taken, I have taken refuge in God. That's a declaration. Okay, then we have all of our petitions. So then we're going to come up here. You are my rock and my fortress. That's a declaration. You are my rock and my fortress. Um, and then he goes, deliver me, my God. So that is, again, a declaration of who he is. Um, from the grasp of the evil one, for you have been my hope. There's another wonderful declaration. You have been my hope, sovereign Lord, my confidence since my youth. And then we have um, from birth, I relied on you. So there's another declaration. Um, you brought me forth from my mother's room. I will ever praise you. There's a declaration. That is what I am going to do. I will ever praise you. And then he says, I have become a, a sign to many that it's basically saying I have become a sign to many. So many are watching me and they are seeing that you are my strong refuge. My mouth is filled with your praise, declaring your splendor all day long. Now, for me, I want to highlight that. But um, we've talked about this in the past. I love um, putting banners around verses that are very meaningful. And this is one that I love so I actually put a banner around this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go like this and I'm going to put a banner around this. Now I've already written a bunch of stuff there, so I'm not going to make anything come out on that side. So I'm just going to go like this and make this look like a banner just on this end. And then usually when I have a verse that's a banner, I will color it in. So I'm just going to take a colored pencil and I'm going to color in the banner part just because this highlights it more and it'll stick out a lot when it's in your Bible. And I, I want it to really show up. And then what I usually do is come around and do the outside edges of it. And I'll even go like this in between the words a little bit just so that you can see the coloring. See, again, I can go like this here. So now when I open up my Bible, as you can see, that's something that's just going to stand out. And then what I usually do is take uh, yellow and I color in all of this. Now, because I'm marking this in yellow, I don't want to use the same color. So I'm going to take um, my pencils and I'm going to use the green. And then what I'll do is I'll highlight all of the verse so that it sticks out. So that's what I'll do in my Bible uh, on a verse that I really love and I want it to stick out um, to find later. And I'm going to show you what my Bible actually looks like on this psalm. So you can see I am... Um, color coding just like I did in my book. So here's my here's my who God is, what God has done. Here's the petitions and then there's my my banner that I put on that verse because I love that verse. I just think it's a great verse because it's talking about the fact that when people look at my life, I'm going to be assigned to them that you are my refuge, that you are the one that I've depended on. And I think that that's amazing. So that's why I, I like to banner mine. So let's go back to what we were doing. <laughs> so before we got distracted a little bit there. So I will ever praise you. So that's this whole section. Now we have labeled all of the petitions in this section. And we have labeled all of the declarations who God is, um, what God has done. 
So now what we're going to do is we're going to look at the next section, which is section 9 through 11. Now, 9 through 11 is a description of his distress. So let's read it and see what is it that he's going through. It says, Do not cast me away when I'm old. Do not forsake me when my strength is gone. For my enemies speak against me. Those who wait to kill me conspire together. They say God has forsaken him. Pursue him, seize him, for no one will rescue him. So what do we see here as uh, what he's going through as far as his enemies go? And what I'm going to do is just come over here and I'm just going to write some of those things. Okay, so we see again... I'm just going to write enemy. And then what do we see? We see him speaking against him. So again, it's words against him. So we're going to write that they speak against him. And then it says they conspire together. So what we see there is uh, multiple enemies. So this isn't just one person that he's talking about here because they're conspiring together. And then it says, those who wait to kill me. So this time, it isn't just words against him. They want to kill him. And then we have pursue, seize. Um, <clears throat> the other thing we see is they keep saying God has forgotten him. So we see taunts. Um, and I'm just going to write taunts that he is abandoned, that God is not with him and God is not going to help him. <clears throat> so that helps us to really understand what um, the enemy is doing against him. Now, because we're labeling petitions and declarations of God, we also want to label the petitions in this section. So we have, do not cast me away. So that is another something he's asking God to do, and do not forsake me. So those are two more petitions in this section. Okay, so now we're going to look at verses 12 through 18. This is a long section. What we're going to do is just go through and look at a few things here. Uh, and, and again, we'll go and uh, kind of label some of the pleas, uh, some of the petitions in this section. Um so 12 through 18. Now, 12 through 18, we're going to kind of break up things as we go too. So, but let's, first of all, let's just look at some of the petitions. So um, starting from the beginning, I'm going to go closer for you here. Do not be far from me. So there's a petition. He's asking God to basically be near. All right. Do not be far from me. Uh, come quickly. Help me. And then his his petitions become more um, what we call imprecatory, right? May my accusers prayer, perish in shame. May those who want to harm me be covered with scorn. Um, so I always like to label the imprecatory ones a different color. So what we're going to do is we're going to do petitions, but then we're also going to write here that word imprecatory. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put pink here. My petitions are pink. But if they're imprecatory, I'm going to do them blue. <clears throat> so, may my accusers perish in shame. May those who want to harm me be covered with scorn and disgrace. So there again is, is uh, the imprecatory against. Um, we see kind of a theme here in, in this section of uh, wanting shame. He's... he's He's using that word several times. May my enemies be put to shame. We see, saw that in verse, um, in verse one, two. He's asking, "May I never be put to shame?" So we see that word shame several times in this uh, psalm. So that's kind of interesting that he keeps using that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to look at fourteen through eighteen because fourteen through eighteen is is a, is kind of interesting. Um, because it parallels two through nine. Um, so what we're going to do is um, I have um, attached below in the in the comment in the section. I have a paper that you can print out, and what I did was I wrote down how it parallels. 
So, for instance, in verse 14, he says, As for me, I will always have hope. Well, verse 5 said, For you have been my hope. So you see the parallel there. We see the word hope. Then verse 14 says, I will praise you more and more. Well, verse 6 says, I will ever praise you. And verse 8 says, My mouth is filled with praise. Then we have verse 15. I will tell of your righteous deeds. Verse 2, in your righteousness, rescue me. So we have the word righteous there twice. Then we have, since my youth, you taught me in verse 17. But in 15, we have, you have been my confidence since my youth. So we're seeing the faithfulness of God in both these two. Then we have verse 18, even when I'm old and gray, do not forsake me. And verse 9 said, do not cast me away when I am old. So we see these parallels going through 14 through 18 with verses 2 through 9. So what I do with a paper like this is in my Bible, I will put some uh, tape back here and I will glue this in, right into the middle of my Bible. So I've got columns and I'll put it right here in the middle of my Bible. Now, because I'm doing it on a page like this, I won't do that. I will um, just tape it to this. So if you're doing... If you're writing things down and you're doing it like this on paper, what I would do is just put this here. And what we're going to do is we're going to tape it just with uh, scotch tape and we're going to make it a flap. And so the way we make it a flap is we just line it up right here and we tape it. And then I can close it and it's a flap. So that's one way to attach it. And you can do that in your Bible is attach a flap like that, or you can attach it to the middle of your Bible. So let me show you again what my Bible looks like because I took it and printed it on colored paper and then I attached it to the middle of my Bible here. So it's just right in there and it is right by my Psalm 71 so that I've got it forever, that little parallel that's going on there. So you can do it either way, whatever works for how you're studying your Bible. But I love the fact that there's this really cool parallel. So now what we're going to do is what we've been doing is we're going to go back and um, we're going to look at all the petitions and the declarations again and color those in in this section just because that's what we've been doing. Even though there's this cool parallel, which we just attached here, we want to still go back through here. So we did the petitions. Do not be far from me. Come quickly. Let me go closer so you can see this better. Are there any more petitions in um, this section? Well, we've got don't. And then we did may they perish and say may they be covered with scorn. And I think for the rest of this, now he's turning more to declarations. As for me, I will always have hope. I will praise the Lord. I will come and proclaim. I will. I love this um, thought process of these are all the things that I am going to do. He's declaring, I will, I will. And look at how many times we see that. I'm just going to take a colored pen and I'm going to mark this. I will, I will. My mouth will tell of your saving acts. Lord, I do not know I can. I will come and proclaim. I will proclaim. So you just see this determination that he is going to worship and he is going to continue to hope. So let's color those in. So as for me, I will always have hope. That's a declaration. I will praise you more and more. That's a declaration. My mouth will tell of your righteous deeds and of your saving acts all day long. That is also a declaration. Uh, let's see here, um, though I know not how to relate them. I will come and proclaim your mighty acts, sovereign Lord. I will proclaim your righteous deeds, yours alone. To this day, I declare. Now, this is something he's already doing. I declare your marvelous deeds. Even when I'm old, do not forsake me. That's another prayer, but we've already got that somewhere else, I think. Do not forsake me. But let's just label it again. Do not forsake me till I declare your power. So there's another one. He's going to declare your power in the next generation. 
Okay, so those are all, again, declarations of what he's going to do. You see so much of this. I am going to praise God. I am going to tell future generations. I want everyone to know what God has done in my life, what God will do in my life um, because of who he is. So I, I just think that's such a neat um, way to look at it. And again, when we're talking about praying the Psalms or uh, using them in that way, this is a great way to just sit down and and pray. Um, as for me, I will always have hope. I will praise you more and more. God, that's the desire of my heart that I would always have hope. Um, I will praise you more and more, but I need your help to do that. See, so we can just take that and we can make this whole thing into this beautiful prayer. And again, that's why I like to label them like that, because then I can come back to this and go, here's one that's got all these great declarations that I can pray over. So now let's look at the last section. And again, this section is just a section of praise. Um, and it seems as if the one praying's faith and belief in God has never altered, except for that one moment where he's talking about his enemies. But otherwise, this whole psalm just seems to be one of, of declaring who God is and just praising him. But this last section almost turns into a song, much more of a song. Uh, it's more poetic. Um, so we see here, uh, it starts off with, let me go again closer so you can see this. Your righteousness, God, reaches to the heavens. You have done great things. Who is like you, Lord? Though you have made me see troubles many and bitter, you will restore my life again. From the depths of the earth, you will again bring me up. You will increase my honor and comfort. I will praise you. Okay, so what I see in this section are two things. I see instead of I will, I will, I will, I see you will, you will. And so I'm going to label those with a different color. Um, it says you will, you will, and you will. See, we see that he's talking now about God and what God is going to do. And again, I look at these as declarations. So we're still going to label them with the yellow like we have been doing, but they're a little bit of a different declaration because now they're God will instead. So we're going to label this, um, you will restore my life again from the depths of the earth. You will bring me up again. You will increase my honor and comfort me once more. So those are the declarations of what he's saying God will do. Okay, and then... Um, I will praise you with the harp for your faithfulness, my God. I will praise you. And so, again, there's this declaration, I will praise, I will sing. And those are the I wills. And so I'm going to go back to the blue that I was using over here where I did I will. And I'm going to just circle that. Here's I will and I will. My lips will. My tongue will. Oh, these are all him again saying, these are the things that I'm going to do. I'm going to praise you with the harp. So we see the music there. I will sing praise to you, Holy One of Israel. My lips will shout for joy when I sing praise to you. Um, my tongue will tell of your righteous acts all day long. Um, and this is a verse that I could see putting a banner around again is just that reminder of that's how I want to live, God. My tongue will tell of your righteous acts all day long. Um, and he says it again over here in 15, my tongue, my mouth will tell of your righteous deeds for your saving acts all day long. And I love that concept. And so for me, that's another like I want to banner. Now what I'm going to do this time, you see how I have a line there. So I'm going to use that line so that I can make this banner the way I like to make the banners um, bigger just for fun. So we're going to go like this and then I can make it come all the way out here. And then uh, let's see. I always try to decide, do I want to make them both on the bottom or do I want to make one on the bottom and one on the top? And this time I'm going to make one on the bottom and one on the top. So I'm going to go right here and make my banner there. So then I've drawn that and I'll color it in later. 
So, because I love that concept and that's something that for me, I want to be able to pray over um, because I want my tongue to be like that. My tongue will tell of your righteous acts all day long. So we see this uh, psalm of just going over all the things that God has done for him. Um, and again, we can see this is, is more of a lifetime. He's not um, urgently saying, God, I need your help. He's saying, you know, yes, there were times in my life where I needed help, but really this is what you have done for me and I am going to worship you and I am going to praise you. And this psalm kind of, um, the poetry of this song really teaches us um, how to manage our times of doubt. So when I am doubting, when I feel like the enemy is coming against me, when I feel like um, I have been forsaken, as he says here, you know, even when I'm old, do not forsake me. So you see a little bit of the doubt there that maybe that won't happen, but then he automatically turns to again, but this is who my God is and you will do this and I will praise you. So it's that constant, like I doubt, but then I go back and I say, this is who I, and this is who my God is. And this is what I will do, which again, I think is a great way to pray. So I look at Psalm 71 as a wonderful Psalm to use as a prayer base. So Lord, we, we thank you that, um, you are our hope and that you are our joy um, and God, I pray that you will help us to be a people who will declare your mighty acts all day long, that we will be a people that will tell future generations of all the things that you have done in our life, and that we will talk to people even today of all the things that you are doing, of who you are, and that our hope and our trust is in you. Thank you, God, for who you are and for how much you love us and care for us. Amen. Well, thank you for joining me for this wonderful psalm of praise and thanksgiving and even in the midst of asking for, even in the midst of asking for help. Um, thanks for joining me. Uh, I'll see you next time.